Hi, I'm Brian Utzi from the Kellogg Graduate School of Management at Northwestern University, where we hosted the second international conference on computational social science. In this video, industry leaders Hannah Wallach of Microsoft, Eitan Bakshi of Facebook, and Dal Nguyen of BuzzFeed provide deep insights about the way industry is using computational social science to grow markets and improve the user experience. What do you think could or should industry do, or what is its role in developing and advancing this field, even defining it? So I think if you asked me this five years ago, I would have made some vague comments about releasing data to academia. But having now spent a couple of years working in a company, I don't think it's that simple. Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the right thing to do is. I, I think there are, yes, releasing data is great. I think it's really complicated because of privacy concerns and just you need your users to trust that their data is being used responsibly and is sort of making that data available to the wider public part of using data responsibly. I'm not sure. I completely agree with a lot of what uh, Hannah said uh, with respect to privacy and it not being all that straightforward or simple to simply release data. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to anticipate how that data is going to be used, and then also in terms of the perception of your users in terms of trusting you uh, with their data. We are starting to release some data in, in more uh, aggregate forms, uh, which can be used in other people's research. So for example, uh, in a, a recent paper that we published in Science, we uh, released a replication archive, which also includes kind of auxiliary information that wasn't necessarily central to the paper, uh, but allows people to uh, measure the ideological alignment of particular media sources. So I think things like that could also uh, potentially benefit the academic community without compromising uh, users' privacy. So what I've been thinking about lately is more how we can make the methods more transparent and accessible and accountable. And again, even there, there's a tension because obviously, you know, companies do want to keep things proprietary. Um, but equally, maybe the best thing for the wider, you know, community, academia, users, is actually to start sort of, you know, making those methods more, more out there in the open. Some of the other ways that I think academia uh, can benefit from industry research or how industry can uh, give back to academia uh, is in developing methods and uh, releasing open source tools that apply these methods and using the sorts of data that we have to validate such methods. So for example, uh, I have some, some work that uh, uses gold standard experimental data to verify observational methods. Uh, I've also been developing some techniques for uh, measuring ideology, and this can be done using open data, let's say, on Twitter, and we're able to validate that using both Twitter data. What makes a good private academic or private-private research partnership? Like, what does that look like for you all? I mean, I don't know if it necessarily differs much from any other collaboration. I think the most important thing is figuring out how to communicate effectively. So one of the biggest things that I see uh, in terms of computational social science collaborations that fail is computer scientists and social scientists not realizing that there are really different disciplinary norms there, both in terms of research goals, in terms of uh, publication, all of these kinds of things. So I think one of the most effective ways to deal with that really is to spend a lot of time talking before you even actually start trying to collaborate. And I think it's the same for industry academia collaborations. You know, what is your goal? Is your goal to learn something about the world? Is your goal to improve a platform? What is, the, is your goal to develop a tool? What is that goal? As far as uh, the way that we've uh, worked with academic collaborations at Facebook uh, is having people come on site and work with us. Uh, so rather than sharing data with individual researchers, which is generally extremely sensitive, 
uh, often very large, you know, it could be potentially terabytes or petabytes of data. Uh, we have people come on site. A lot of the data exists in disparate tables that requires some communication with engineers or the data scientists who instrumented the data. We also have a lot of specialized tools for handling that. And it might take something on the order of four to six weeks in order to even just be ramped up with our infrastructure. Uh, so actually having people on site and working with us uh, tends to be uh, one of the most effective means. The other thing is that, is that um, something that uh, you know, we've been thinking about also is maybe industry can work more with industry, right? Like companies can work more together on research or sharing of data. Um, companies that aren't, you know, competitors obviously uh, could come together because, you know, we have a different set of data than is available to Facebook and, 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 and vice versa. Um, and, but together it could be a, it could, there could be an interesting uh, collaboration that, that, uh, that would be, you know, not replicatable otherwise. The fact that so much of our content is visual, the kinds of things that you can that that we would want to be able to get out of that content is would be amazing if we had a really great way to know about what these videos and images are actually about in, in, in a very nuanced way. Uh, I think as the, the internet moves toward uh, more and more visual media, as people are primarily consuming, uh, let's say, photos on Instagram. Instagram is becoming in increasingly popular. Uh, or they're watching videos. We need some way to parse that uh, and understand what is the content of, of that kind of media. And we can't use that using the, the kinds of tools that uh, machine learning researchers have been focused on a lot recently, which is like, let's say, or in the past, uh, which is, let's say, textual data, or in political science, you know, there's a, there's a big community around text as data, what's going to happen when everything is in images? Uh, and so uh, these kinds of convolutional neural networks that people are developing are tremendously important for that.